Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Matt Streger, and I am happy to be joined by a man that has carved such a place in our beloved sport that he is known all throughout the world. Thank you for joining us, Sonny Ono. Hey, Matt, it's so good to see you. You, you look great. Thanks. I appreciate it. So do you. So there's a lot of things that I want to talk about. A lot of our viewers are very excited for some events. So let's start. Uh, 1030 Eastern Time, July 22nd. We begin with our first big event. It's Joshi Pro. Talk to us a little bit about how this is different than what American viewers are used to watching. Yeah, I, I think the uh, 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 name of the company is Tokyo Josh. It's a part of uh, 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 DDT, which is the, uh, the kind of like a, a, sis, a brother company. Um, uh, they were founded in 97, and, and uh, they thought the women wrestling was um, kind of went away in Japan. You know, the All Japan Pro, which All Japan Joshi, was really huge you know, 25 years ago, you know, uh, uh, Miami Toyota, uh, Bo Nakano, you know, and, and uh, uh, Akira Hokuto. Those were, those were the great that the, some of the American fan knows. And they're known, those girls or ladies were known as so stiff, so over the top, <laughs> the stuff they were doing. And as well as they were such a, a amazing athlete. You know, American fans are, and, and Western culture, Japanese ladies are known as kind of like a demure, you know, walk behind a man, serving the man type of, you know, uh, their, their image is like a, a geisha ladies, right? I mean, you know what I mean? Uh, pretty dainty ladies who, who, who's a courtesan and, and artist, you know? So it was totally 180 degree when they saw these women doing a double stomp off the top rope which is, I don't know anybody else who wants to take that at all, but they were doing that routinely. And, and uh, so they became really huge, you know, 20 years ago, you know, 25 years ago. But that kind of went away with wrestling as uh, uh, whatever the reason, that kind of whined. And the women wrestling kind of went, got real spotty there for a while. There was other offshoot group that came along, like Gaia Japan, um, and, and of course they, they folded after a while and right now there's a kind of resurgence of new women wrestling with company like a stardom, Tokyo Josh. Stardom was a uh, matter of fact, you all former employer, WWE tried to buy stardom, but uh, new Japan, I shouldn't use this word sneaked in cause it's, it's not a real good word to associate with Japanese, but anyway, <laughs> it snuck in and, 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 uh, uh, Bought the company. So uh, 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 Stardom is an all-women group. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's owned by a parent company of uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Matter of fact, in last year at the Tokyo Dome show, you know, they, they were highlighted uh, with a couple of matches from, from that group. And what we get to introduce to Tokyo Josh is that you get to see amazing talent of these young ladies, you know, was all different size. And they will have some uh, Westerners or Americans and, and uh, English on the matches as well as, as we move forward and, and you'll see it. And I think, you know, that, that's kind of missing now in American television. You'll get to see a lot more action than you ever seen women go through with Tokyo Josh. That's awesome. And I like the start time, 1030 Eastern time on July 22nd. Now, I remember you know, when I was younger, one of my favorite things to do, stay up all night and just watch wrestling. And that's <laughs> something we can do because after this at 530 a.m. July 23rd, that's when DDT comes in. Uh, Sonny, as a former athlete yourself, and a lot of people might not know this, one of the best in the world. The athleticism here cannot be overlooked, whether it be male, female, the athleticism, the pure beauty of the body in motion is something that is also visually captivating. Is that an intent or is that just a byproduct? No, I, I think it's both, really. Um, the training in Japan, uh, which a lot of Americans try to go over there and train in their system because, it, it, because it's so intense. I mean... The dojo system over there comes from uh, a sumo background. So it's very strict. Uh, they're, they're confined to their quarters. They train, 
you know, 10 hours a day, um, you know, and, and when they're not training, they're usually cooking, uh, 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 you know, doing laundries, you know, cleaning the, clean, clean the gym. You know, it's really a lifestyle that they have to go through just even get to the level where they can perform for an audience. So um, do, they're absolutely trained, you know, the competition is so fierce that, that, that in order for you to, you know, to, to be looked at, you really need to stand out, and that's why they train so hard. And and uh, byproduct of that is, is is some of the great athleticism. And because of you know, world is so much smaller now with the internet, like we're doing right now, that they have seen what goes on and they study what goes on in WWE. You know, uh, back in WCW days, or or what's happening in luchas, you know, or AEW. And so. Um, you know, uh, there's a rumor right now that DDT ha is in talks with AEW to do some kind of a call, you know, st working event. And, and like I said, it's just a rumor. But, uh, uh, you know, Kenny Omega made his name in DDT. So. Yeah, absolutely. The, the attachment of names. And I think there's a, a certain nicety to the fact that while the world is small it also opens up now because especially in our great sport you go up the ladder you go down the ladder you're going to see someone you know and however you treated that person is always going to be remembered <laughs> and and i think it would be great for uh, someone in the position that kenny is in to to really shine a light on some great wrestling and it brings me to my next point for the new viewer for the person that's just turning this on and all they're familiar with are, are, are the bigger companies how would this be different to them and why are they going to love it? Well, you know, the, the, the wrestling match itself is, uh, let's talk about Tokyo Josh, is, is you, you're going to get to see some of the phenomenal wrestling. Um, uh, you know, and, and it's really interesting. I w I, I've, been, I've been watching their programming and what I'm finding is that, you know, how Japanese ha will take something that is American and make it into their own such as baseball. It's called the baseball rule over there, right? And, and uh, it's their own. And they, they have their own, you know, quirk about it. Such as in baseball, I went to a baseball game a couple of years ago and uh, umpire made a mistake. Imagine this that in Major happens. League Baseball. <laughs> yeah, well, umpire made a mistake and they stopped the game. He walked to the mound and tipped his hat and apologized to the audience. I mean, you know, that kind of stuff that what you'll never see. So they take something that it's American and make it into their own, you know. So same thing with wrestling. And what I, where I was going to go with Tokyo Joshi is that a lot of costume they play. Or um, you know how big the anime is in Japan. And, of course, now in, in all over the rest of the world. that Many of the characters got a real close resemblance to a lot of the anime character that you see in manga. And and you watch his, you know, cosplay. Look like watching a cosplay character wrestle and live. So that's the kind of feeling you get. So you're gonna get a lot of what we call otaku, which is uh, 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 it's it's a word to use in Japan where you're su such a great fan. You know, uh, little rabbit fans are called otaku. And you're gonna see a lot of otaku come out of a lot of Americans and rest of the world to watch Tokyo Josh. There you go, and you sold me on it because uh, for, for my generation, for my fandom, a lot of the wrestling from the eastern side of the world involved just a lot of stripped down, colorless, and what I enjoyed so much was the technique. So now you take the technique and you add in the color and the pageantry. I'm certainly sold. Once again, 10.30 Eastern Time, July 22nd, and then 5.30 a.m. July 23rd, DDT comes our way. Take a minute or two and talk to us about that. Well, DDT is, is uh, kind of like a hybrid of what's happening in Japan. Of course, there's New Japan, which everybody's familiar with, was known as kind of like a, you know, of course, it's the biggest company, and they do their huge Tokyo Dome shows that everybody knows at Wrestling Kingdom, uh, which is on Fight TV as well. And, and, you know, what's interesting about DDT is you get to see legitimate hardcore wrestling, but they give you the whole gambit. In other words, they do some comedy routines. So it's really a more of an entertainment. I should say more of, but there's a lot of entertainment involved with. You'll see, you'll see some of the little outlandish stuff, you know, and you get to see some actually, you know, like, like 
tough man because they cross over as many promotion they, you'll have uh, uh akiyama for instance from uh, all J all japan will come in and 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 work with uh, uh people from ddt or challenge for ddt championship belt and matter of fact i think i believe he's on a card on on this this pay-per-view so you know you get to see a lot of familiar faces if you're a japanese fan pro wrestling fan you'll get to recognize some of the names there here and there you know that you get to see on ddt now this will be a first ever you know introduction to our audience on fight tv but if you follow along you're gonna you you will guarantee you'll love this product because you get to see all different kind of stuff you'll laugh you'll be surprised and you might wince a little bit when you watch this program yeah, nothing wrong with that. I think it's the one thing that unites all of us around the world is we remember the moment in which we fell in love with pro wrestling. And Sonny, I want to say as a fan, removing myself from the quote unquote business, uh, your contributions and the role that you played for a lot of viewers to be introduced to new wrestling, uh, it's not lost on me. So I think on behalf of everyone here at Fight, I want to say thank you very much. And I understand you may or may not have a birthday coming up soon as well. Can we wish you a happy birthday? Yeah, yeah, a little early. But, yeah, in, in, in a few days, so like a five day after the event, it'll be, it'll be my birthday and I'll be getting, you know, my hair is really showing. But at least I still have some. That's right. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> thank God. It beats the alternative. Ladies and gentlemen, on July the 22nd, rolling into July the 23rd, an alternative is presented here on Fight. We thank Sonny Ono so much for joining us. We'll see you all there at the event. Sonny, where can people find you on social media? Oh, you can find me on Facebook under Sonny Ono. You know, I'm the guy who's doing the selfie. So uh, I'm, the, I'm the selfie made man. You'll find me there. And hey, Matt. Yes, sir. As we move forward and this virus thing is all over, when it's all done, you and I had to take a trip to Tokyo okay. where I'm going to show you firsthand, you know, behind the curtain, front of the curtain, behind the desk. I'm going to show you all about Japan that you don't get to see on a regular tourist trips. All right. I, I appreciate <laughs> it so much. We'll bring a camera and we'll stream it here on Fight. All right. Great. All right. Take care, Sonny. We'll see you July 22nd. This is Matt Stryker saying goodbye, everybody. We'll see you out there.